right, my name is Monique Douglas, and I am the youth coordinator for the summer program, one of them. My name is Charles, Charles Hewley. I am one of the co-teachers for the field production portion of the youth program at BNN. We try to get them to learn how to tell a story and how to use framing, composition, and dialogue to tell a story. And what kind of stories do they want to tell? A lot of the things that we focused on on a daily basis were geared towards being on the go, being out in the elements, using the actual handheld cameras, audio, um, the rule of thirds, how to set up and frame a shot, table reads, scripting, all of these things that kind of go into more on set, on the go, movie, documentary type of productions. We wanted to really be more socially engaged as opposed to um, just do something that was n more introspective. This one was geared more towards society and what was happening for them as brown and black teens. Black lives matter. Black lives matter. Our main one is uh, Black Lives Matter and then like our short films are kind of just like um, for more of us for learning and stuff like that, so we could have came up with anything. It was just more for learning about how to do things. The Black Lives Matter was the theme, and you had to like do something for it. But I didn't really like the theme, but I liked that there was a theme. I like to be guided in a certain direction, and then I'll pick whatever goes with that direction. How I feel about the Black Lives Matter movement, I feel like it's a way that people can come together. People can come together and they can, um, like, how do I they can like stand up for what they believe in. I actually met Alicia Garza, which is one of the um, the founders of Black Lives Movement, and um, I'm going to her little um, meetings at Harvard and whatever. It was really good. So doing this project about Black Lives Matter, it was just important, and it was a, it was like a purpose. The people that don't understand the movement will say, "Oh." Uh, looking from the outside that we're saying we want black isolation or a whole bunch of nonsense that I've heard. <laughs> it's, it's kind of funny actually because it explains the ignorance of some people um, in America and even throughout the world. Um, I feel like it's, I love the idea of what we're doing. I think it's like really good. Um, for me it's like it's motivation to like do things that you really believe in because Black Lives Matter is a movement that's causing like people saying like what's wrong with certain situations that has been happening and reoccurring. As black kids, well majority, okay, well as black kids, um, we should um, you know, learn about it, embrace it, embrace that we're black, um, give awareness. In general, I think it's a movement that needs to happen. We have to have a voice for while we've been the broken pieces of this nation's mirror so together, they'll be forced to acknowledge the horrific reflection. The topic that we were focusing on was Black Lives Matter. So we gave them a overall theme and up under that umbrella they had to pick a topic to pitch. We had about six to seven pitches. We chose only three to really seriously work on. Um, I like the idea that we got to come up with our own project ideas because I feel like that's more, it hits home for people more than you just saying like, oh, make something about cats, you know what I mean? So out of the three we chose was sexism, police brutality, and poetry. That was the third one. I mean, I had to make a pitch and that didn't go through. And I was kind of mad, but then I learned how to take cr constructive criticism, which is a really important take. Gianni's project, I love it. I think it's a really different way of viewing police brutality in a different manner and Black Lives Matter. His is more so touching based on the fact that sometimes like there are bad police officers, but there also are good police officers and they do good things. So I think that's a really positive side and I feel like that helps the community actually be able to like be able to work together because if you always constantly have this anger towards this group 
of people and you only know one person, it's going to be really hard for you to build a relationship with them. Um, the honest piece is solid. You'll have officers come and talk about what they're doing and a whole series of questions that Gianni's going to ask. So for the police brutality piece, which was Gianni's piece, we interviewed several police officers, um, African-American police officers from an organization called Mamlio, which I think gave a lot of insight to the police killings that have been going on, to the perception of just a black individual on the street and that has to deal with the police officer, and also the perspective of being a black person in uniform. It's Gianni's and that was just also really lovely and he had a really insightful ideas about how he wanted his piece to be done. He didn't know exactly how to achieve it, but he knew exactly what he wanted. And that piece is called Black and Blue and it's really to look at the duality between um, being a police officer and being black at the same time. But to talk to those officers for, for their take on what's happening nationally was very instrumental and because they're people at the end of the day. I'm, I'm a black man first, uh, black woman, and I'm a police officer second. People think that I am part of the problem when I'm actually part of the solution. I feel like that it's basically for black people that are, they feel like that they're unsafe around all police officers and the people that are being interviewed for my show is basically trying to tell people back at home that are probably part of the Black Lives Matter movement that not all officers are bad. Some of them are really doing their job, especially if they're African-American, like black officers, and they actually feel empathy for you, they feel sympathy for you. And by the fact that they're also giving out opinions for or like everyone around the world, and I think everyone around the world should actually see this because people think that police officers are dangerous and others, they might be right, they might be wrong. Who knows if they watch the piece that I'm making. Adriana's piece really, I really love that piece tremendously. Hers really, she really had a very clear vision of what she wanted her piece to be. She wanted this piece to be symbolic of um, the past, the present, and the future. Her piece starts off with a, a piece called Oya, um, and that's looking at the colonial past. The present, which was a, a, a piece on uh, Abigail Fisher. So we paired with a, with a, with a group called Mass Leap, um, who were doing a lot of social justice work along with training future spoken word artists. And the final piece, which is Future, which is a piece uh, written in the voice of Muhammad Ali talking to Kanye West about greatness. That was really a very resonating piece because it was sort of an elder having a conversation with a youth and that this also, this year, Muhammad Ali died. Adriana's piece, the poetry, I like the fact that she has um, poets that come in and talk and, you know, do the little thing and then she's going to have B-roll of uh, Black Lives Matter. So I really don't know how to call or title this project, but I'm going to just title it like Lifetime for African Americans. Basically, my project touches base on the past, the present, and the future of the situations that African Americans had to go through from slavery to possible solutions of how we can fix the world. Um, I have three poems that I'm choosing. One's going to represent past, present, and future. And basically, they're all going to give a side of how African Americans feel or like what they've been going through. It's all going to give you that feel of like at that moment, at that time, how people feel, how people see it. My skin with lemon juice. Look, Look at my hands. hands. You can see me clear now. Does your skin not feel strange from carbon? It is nothing close to strange, but it is close enough to pour in my blood. And when Adriana saw what she had envisioned in the past, present, future. She was markedly shocked and surprised by the fact that it was her idea. That piece really was very sim symbolic of the entire summer. The third piece was Sexism, which was Yanai's piece. That one we attempted to do in a one-shot, 
meaning that we wanted to do everything in one take. The whole piece was going to be extremely hard to get done from a shooting standpoint. We did not get it in a one shot how we wanted. There was probably a little bit of confusion about Yanai's vision and actually capturing what we could capture with the learning curve of working with the students, the type of extras that we had or the amount of extras that we had and actually facilitating everything. Yanai's piece, I think it's really interesting because I love the idea of like somebody walking through what's going on and like you're seeing the action on the back side. I feel like it provides this depth and it makes you, it, it gives you a different feel. It's like you're there and you're walking through it and you're like, man, like, you see all this stuff happening and it's kind of crazy so I feel like with these different projects it gives you a different feel because like I said each producer is different so I really I really like the the three different projects that we came up with and to really look at um, black women and how they impact different kinds of movements I was trying to show how women usually um, women and like the black lives matter movement and stuff aren't recognized because it's like Everything that's going on with like the shooting and stuff, it's all men. And like my topic was sexism, so that's why I came up with it. And she was like saying specifically how the people that came up with the Black Lives Matter movement were women. If women are the one that created it, not for peace, but like so people can realize what's happening. The Black Lives Matter movement is just because men are getting shot. Because she named some girls that are in there that like fought with police or got shot by police too, but people just don't realize all the stuff that happens with women as well as men. So that was the whole and that's why we had a woman talking. The United's piece kind of brought home the, the Black Lives Matter um, topic. It showed um, black youth, and that's what we're focused on is, is the youth, um, you know, in, in different uh, forms um, throughout the video. And as we're helping, it shows, you know, the police, how police brutality is basically depicted. Um, so it shows an officer forcing a child onto a wall takes the child away all roughly you know. um, that police brutality happens all the time it's probably happening right around the corner right now you know um, and then it shows uh, Monique as the person who's scrubbing the blood off the, the uh, pavement that's a very vivid description that I think needs to be seen because far too much we don't focus on the families, the things outside of just that one scenario that happened. We might focus on Trayvon, but I've never seen anybody speak out for Trayvon's mom. Um, and I think that's what we need to, to kind of focus on a little more. You know, I'm not saying don't focus on things that happen, but you need to focus on everything you know, that family life to matters. I am my brother's keeper and my sister's as well. I think that one was really one of the most um, challenging pieces to try and pull off in a shooting kind of way. That in itself gave them the idea of the complexities of having to orchestrate a long shot and how much time it actually takes to accomplish something that really looks great. My knee still hurt from that one. <laughs> I was the mom on that particular piece. Once we got all of the footage and um, material that we needed, we were able to actually take that one shot and kind of contour it, which turned out to be sort of a news spot with a news anchor doing a typical, you know, seven o'clock news segment, walking down the street and touching on several topics. The three projects done uh, were a very good example of the, um, the message we were trying to send. And I believe that through the media, through filming, uh, pictures worth a thousand words, right? So that means a video must be worth infinite words um, and it's fantastic that we as only 15 16 17 year olds have the opportunity to do something like that so overall i think all the three um i think all the three um projects are going good and it's gonna come out great i really think it's um, very interesting I wish we could have done a little more just because you get so much, you get different things from different projects. Everybody as a producer has their own point of view of how they want to see something. Like, they were fun making them. Um, it was really fun to, not fun, but it was really cool to see other people's perspectives uh, about how they feel about it and the poems were kind of 
like really awesome and stuff like that threw me away. I feel like that they might be good because people that are part of, part of the Black Lives movement might want to see these and have their own words and thoughts about these pieces. And they might think that it's really good and it might be able to help them and basically know that there are officers that are good or bad, but there might be some really good ones that are basically doing all they can to get forgiveness for black and white people. For them. So for me, every summer, to kind of see them walk in one way and leave another, that's generally the most exciting piece for me. I had a great experience. I believe that they had a great experience. And I think that this is something that a lot of them are going to build upon. A former teaching partner of mine watched the episode that we did, and she started to cry. I think the Black Lives Matter theme that forced them to think about topics and research and look in the media and, and have an opinion on all the situations that are going on in society right now was the biggest takeaway for them and for myself.